Welcome to the Jazz. My name is Nagy. I'm here once again with my co-host, the man who's always in the zeitgeist. You live in the zeitgeist, Liam McNeil. There's few better places to be than in the zeitgeist because mm. it means uh, my nonsense is being spoken to people as opposed to, as opposed to being spoken into the ether as it usually is. Yes. It, it makes it much less uh, serial killerish if I'm <laughs> speaking does. to an audience. Well, the serial killers always had places to go to plan their killings. You it see, did. it was always it was always in a cabin or somewhere in the woods or even at, like you know, it was always an unassuming flatmate or yeah. someone that lives next door. He was the quiet neighbour. You know, yes. we wouldn't have dreamed of it. And then, of course, you got the ones who just did it in their house. Was it the was, where's the serial killers that were quite loud from the mm. start? Where were the ones that were like you know? I tell you what, that bloke next door knew he was a serial killer. <laughs> I just couldn't prove it. Yeah, that weird look around and those screams coming out of the house. Couldn't have predicted. Couldn't have predicted. Couldn't have made it. it up. I wasn't going to bother anyone about it. You know, maybe he was. Just just into watching some very, very loud, yeah. murderous television. Welcome to the episode, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of butchered, Liam, butchered, <laughs> the night's round one hopes, oh, butchered. Already. Hello. Already butchered. Sorry, there's a small four-legged animal licking my knee. It's biscuit. really cute. Biscuit. Little Biscuit. Little How Biscuit joins there, us <laughs> this, uh, this week. But Liam, yes, no, it wasn't the best start that we mm. had all hoped for. I'd argue it was the worst start. Well, it Because it's really one of two. It's either the best start and you win or it's the worst start and you lose. Yes. You know, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's rarely an in-between. Yes. Given that draws have been largely outlawed from the game. A two-horse race. A two-horse race. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, you either do or you don't. Which Volandis is a big fan of the two-horse race. No, because yeah. there's less horse Horses to bet on. That's if it was up to him, he would have a 4,000 horse race. Will we see a Volandi's uh, introduction, change of the rules? They're like, well, look, we're trying to jam all these teams in. Mm. You know, 20 teams he yeah. wants to have by 2030, something like that. Maybe 30 teams. Maybe by he'll 2020. Say, maybe say, well, look, we're going we're gonna to actually change the field. There's actually going to be two games played at one time in a cross section. Yeah, play them perpendicular to each other. Yeah. He's also going to replace the ball uh, with a small, uh, you know, uh, rabbit robot that you have to play as chase around. <laughs> you have to chase you it, don't yeah. actually carry the ball. You just chase it yeah. and then tackle it and you win. Herd it. Herd <laughs> it into the try line. You know, there'll be dogs. There'll be dogs out there. Biscuit will be there. Yeah. There'll be all there'll be, <laughs> All sorts. <laughs> there'll be all. There'll be a different animal. It would be like a zoo. Mm, be a it would be. It would be chaos. What animal do you think would be best as an all-round rugby league player? Oh, good question. Like yeah, the obvious answer is a chimp because it can hold the ball somewhat. Obviously, lacking the opposable thumbs. Yes. Probably can't throw. You know, a three meter. Or, you know, a ten meter cutout pass. But it could effectively hold the ball, make a good strong carry, get a quick play. The ball. What about if there was their apparatuses or like? Would oh, there, let's say yes, apparatuses. Would there be uh, maybe like an impressive animal that you don't often give credit to? Maybe like a goat. You know, when you see mm. goats that climb things, you're like, God, God, how do you get up there? They're also fairly aggressive. They're aggressive, goats are they? Love yeah. headbutting. I yeah. think uh, you know. Uh, I think there's, they're definitely are they, in the conversation. Are they goats that headbutt? Uh, headbutt? Oh yes, I've been are headbutted by goats many times. They, it's great. Fun. Okay, good. Yeah. They, are, they are goats. I thought maybe of a ram. I thought that's what they with the big well, rams would do it. Of course, that's why they're called rams. Yeah, they just ram into things all the time. You know, the weather's going to be really bad is when they put out a warning to all the uh, the, the the sheep farmers. Warning! Uh, I forget what, what the name television of- stations are you watching. No, mainly it's in Tasmania, <laughs> but they say they put out a warning there, and it's like, why do they do that? It's because it reaches a certain temperature, the winds get cold enough, and then sheep just die. They love to die. <laughs> They lo- <laughs> they and then, of course, you've got the ultimate small talk in Australia. It's like, oh, it's raining. Ain't Crazy that is warning. That's it, what I was trying to think. It's raining. Yeah. Ain't that a shame? Yeah, it's good for the farmers. Good for the farmers. But <laughs> it not- shuts the conversation down immediately. <laughs> good for the ducks. Good for the farmers. That's all we care about. Ducks and farmers. Yeah. That is the campaign <laughs> policy that the Joust is running for. In the local by-election of 2024. <laughs> it's also good for... Farmers and ducks. Good weather is also good for pubs that have a nice big mm. outdoor section that you can enjoy beers. Now, we happen to know yeah. of one particularly good large outdoor section, a garden perhaps, yes. in which you can drink beers now. You Where would we find that? That's the Wickham Park Hotel. Mm. A conveniently placed there, right in Wickham, but also quite close to Hamilton, quite close to all the suburbs. Really. Very, very conveniently located. And Joust is keeping an eye out of Knights games. There is going to be... A just 
Hamburger. Hamburger. Mm. It's in top secret. Top yeah. secret recipe uh, made by the finest chefs there, uh, Corey Park and the lads. And there might be some ladies as well, lady lads. Uh, yeah. They're in the, in the kitchen as well. But I tell you what, they do a damn fine job. Mm. And, uh, it's you know, sometimes you, you get the pub grub and it's mm. meant to be just, you know, Something that's lesser than than a restaurant. No, 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 not in this case. This is more like a fancy restaurant. Again, I go back to the pork belly jousts. As I told you the secret last week, slow roast it overnight, yeah. deep fry for ten seconds. Bam, crackling like you would. You would. You could eat it every day of the year you would, feasibly, yeah. and I would. They should bottle it, but it would be very hard to get the crackling out. Well, then it's not crackling; it becomes a liquid. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There's our new big product: liquid crackling. Liquid like, crackling. Like, yeah, you could pour it out on whatever you like, and it's like a topping. It's like a dressing. A dressing. A dressing yeah. of crackling. It's just fat in the end, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Let me start with the news. So I was late on the news intro no, there. I thought we were going to keep talking delicious food. Some sort of harmony there. It was, it was amazing. Uh, lots to talk about in the news this mm, week. But a multitude of news. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think everything. On the mind of the regular mm. uh, rugby league supporter, it is really the 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 tipster's nightmare that round one was. You know, we mm. all had a plan going in. We all joined the tipping comps and we thought, this is going to be a year. How much is it to join? How much is the main prize? Mm. But then those all those dreams were quickly quashed. With, uh, they were dashed. With, dashed. Against the rocks of, of rugby league. League fortuity. Our very own man behind the buttons, uh, Pom, managed a zero from eight. Now, we were discussing this beforehand. That's arguably harder, harder than picking yeah. a perfect eight it of is. eight. Yeah. Which, uh, so, well done, Pom. It's got all the complexity, but with humiliation surrounding it, which is <laughs> it's something that you remember probably for the rest of your life. <laughs> so, you definitely remember the, the one you got the yeah. eight, and you're like, hooray, eight from eight, but then it's zero from eight. It's like you have to tell people. That's it. It lives with you. It lives yeah. with you to, till you go down in your grave. It is good with the the pubs that still do the uh, the, the, the notice board mm. tipping comp where it's written down and you can see you can track it yeah. a lot of them is online now which it's not as much fun mm. it's not as much fun it takes the social aspect like you know back when I was working at uh, Pub and Walls End it was great we had the tipping comp yes. when you came in to put your tips on you get a free beer so mm. everyone would kind of come in around the same time they yeah. put their tips on they'd discuss the tips they'd have fun yeah. The world doesn't allow you to have fun anymore. Yeah. I, I agree, Biscuits. Biscuits is furious. Biscuits is furious. You're not allowed to have fun, fun in anymore. this day and age. <laughs> but we, if we look at the... Uh, it started with the Vegas games. And, uh, you know, Manly versus South. I think everyone thought South was the, the mm. way to go. Manly didn't make the finals. Manly. Roosters over the Broncos. Raiders over the Knights. Sharks over the Warriors, despite the Warriors getting out to a 12 point to nil lead. And the Storm continues on this amazing run. Is of it 22 years now they've won every round one game? 21 mean, years? It's something quite ludicrous. I it's don't. absolutely, a, you know, it's one of those stats in rugby league that it does get talked about. Fairly yeah. regularly, and yeah. yet it still manages to impress me every time. Yeah. It doesn't get old. It's not one of these, oh, Melbourne Storm won round one again. It's like, Melbourne Storm have won round one again. Every single year it gets more impressive than it was the last. March Premiers, they mm. call them. Yeah, yeah. Well, Which, that used to be the Dragons thing. It was May like, Premiers. For so long, the, May pre- the Dragons were the May Premiers. Yeah. So, yeah, we, Melbourne are the March Premiers. The March Premiers. And often they're the, you know, October Premiers. We also well. had a, the, to compile the, the, the tipster's nightmare was mm. the hometown losers, which unfortunately the Knights were part of. You know, we yeah. had a packed crowd there at uh, McDonald Jones Stadium and then we invited the Raiders in they gave us a bit of Touch up! A Sounds flogging. like the kind of band that would play at uh, the beautiful Wickham Park Hotel in the front room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're the hometown They're losers. <laughs> yeah, they do all covers. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful day. But bad covers. Bad. They don't cover the songs well. <laughs> they don't cover them well at all. There was also some teams there uh, amongst the hometown losers, uh, which I'll just briefly, uh, the, the obviously the Warriors over there in New mm. Zealand, another country. They took them over there to a completely different country than Australia, and they still couldn't manage the win. The Titans up there uh, got, got uh, smacked around by the Dragons. And then, uh, you know, the Dolphins at uh, the, the the big show mm. at uh, Suncourt Stadium. But at the risk of, you know, focusing too long on the hometown losers, mm. I would like to briefly discuss, briefly discuss yeah. the Melbourne Storm Penrith Panthers Please game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as there's a certain type of rugby league game, it's not good for the, you know, the average, uh, you know, casual viewer. It's not mm. good for people who are new to yeah. watching the game. It's one for the purest. And yes. that often happens when it's a very low scoring game. They always say it's one for the purest. And I think this one was absolutely one for the... I was just intrigued the whole game. I was gripped. I was... I had the, It had this hold on my heart for the yes. whole 80 minutes. Yeah. I just was at the edge of my seat. No flamboyance. No. There was no. a lack of flamboyance. Was... Absolute lack of flamboyance. Grit. It was grit is the yeah. best way I would describe yeah. it. The Melbourne Storm's defence, yep. albeit against a clunky Panthers attack. Yes. Um, you know... Pe- 
teams like the Panthers don't play poorly in a vacuum. So people no. say the you know the Panthers played poorly. They played poorly in large part because they were forced to play poorly by a very powerful Melbourne defensive performance. And it's amazing, without Cameron Munster being mm. there, and then you, <clears> you see these new players that pop up every year for the Melbourne Storm, and they immediately get pushed into superstar. And they're mm. like, look, how did they find these guys? What are they doing to them? What's in the water down there in Melbourne? Now, Lead, maybe. Despite being almost a lifetime player at Melbourne and an integral part of the club, Cooper Cronk still doesn't seem to know the players' names. At one point, there was four halves or the four, you know, spine players uh, conversing in the middle of the field, and he said, "Oh, now we've got Hughes, uh, Grant, Pappenhausen, and uh, Cameron Munster there in the huddle having a chat." Cameron, Cameron Munster, was Munster wasn't even on the field. No, he like wasn't. not he was on the bench or not he was standing out of the wing. He was in a suit, in a dinner suit, like, up in the up in the coach's box. Coach's box, yeah. Which I is brave think, for yeah. him because you know if you wear your suit, you don't want to get all Craig Bellamy spit all over it and sweat because he. He bounces his head around. He's a moist man. He is. Craig Bellamy is a moist man. I was talking to my wife about the game and I said... About and we'll, moistness. About moistness. And we said... I said, I was... I'm a little bit worried about Craig because it was meant to be his last year. And then she says, why? And I'm like, he just gets so emotional. Mm. And then and I was like, he's reaching the later stages of his life. You know, I think we've said he's is only... He? Yeah, well, he's, he's not 60, that old. 60-something. Um, yeah, he's only, aged well. Only a few years younger For than... a furious man. Only he's a few, so very angry. He's few, aged really well. Two years younger than Gus? Four years younger than Gus? Something like that. There's same, a, age same age as Gus. They're like the you, same age? Same age, yeah. What and so, kind it, of hell of a life has <laughs> Gus lived to look the same... Or to be the same age, but look 40 years his senior? Gravity. Gravity's <laughs> done that to Gus, I think. Gravity and weight. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, Well, you can't have one without the other. <laughs> what? KFC, KFC has also happened to, to Gus. No, you know? I think it was Macca's. I remember he's told the story a few times on the way home from every uh, game he'd commentate. He'd always yeah. pop into Macca's, and I think he'd get two cheeseburgers. I thought he'd be a Philadelphia fish, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what are those? filet of fish I thought you said Philadelphia. Phil- right? Philadelphia fish. Yeah. It's got fidel. I like that the filet of fish or the fillet of fish, however you will, it yeah. just keeps chugging on. Yeah. Like, it's the kind of menu item that no one, no one orders except good Catholic boys in Lent. One big, and yet it's still there. One big flat finger. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've Scalloped, like because you know the scallop is like a super chip. Yeah, they they've just scalloped the finger. Yeah, it's like a whole palm, mm. uh, <laughs> a palm of fish. They should call it. Uh, <laughs> but a fish palm, a fish palm, there fish palm. Yeah. There's uh, the so what- has you ever dunked a scallop in gravy? <laughs> yeah, I only yeah. learned this last week from our man behind the camera, Josh. Because yeah. like you said, it's a, a scallop is a super, super chip. chip. Yeah, but I'd never made the connection. To dunk it in gravy. Because of the I think it's changed my life. Surface area. Yeah, my yeah. cholesterol's already so high. I think I might be dead within the month. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Jousters. But I'm going to go down deliciously. Round one did not uh, pardon anyone from its uh, casualty mm. ward, Liam. I think there was a lot of players out there that didn't survive round one. They had big plans for their season. Oh, huge they, plans. But they couldn't couldn't make it past round one. Well, I mean, most NRL players would. I can't imagine many NRL players with small plans. For no, the that's right. Yeah, there's people that are saying... get three games in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have, a, have a run here and there. That's about it. Retire. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pull the pin. Yeah. Uh, Tom Gilbert actually uh, got injured uh, before the, the season kicked off. Um, Isn't that a heartbreaker? But... but the, I think this is a, a, an integral uh, injury mm. uh, for the Dolphins. You brought up an interesting stat about Tom Gilbert yes. uh, and the Dolphins winning percentage last year. Nagy, well, could last you fill year, the jousters in? Everyone remembers that the Dolphins you know, mm. took off like flyers and then they were up there in the top sort of four or five uh, at the beginning of the season and they won six of their first ten. Mm. And everyone thought, that's impressive for a new club. Well, I think we'd all had them tipped for the spoon. They, I think a lot of people yeah. did. You know? And they said, they said, no, six out of ten. We're up there with the best. But then Tom Gilbert got injured in round... In the first game of Origin, mm. and then they only won two of their remaining 12, 14 games. Now, two I out of 14. Origin last season out of my mind. I was really hoping you wouldn't bring it up. Yeah, well, he injured his shoulder. I forgot it had happened. He injured his shoulder, and then, uh, but then since he's done his ACL, so he's out, but then he got a blood clot in his lung, and mm. so his ACL surgery is going to be delayed. Arguably a bad place to have a blood clot. No one wants it there. Well, and again, Jousters, we're not any um, form of medical professionals. No. Please and don't accuse us of being such, but I think a blood clot, as controversial as this may sound, in the lung is a bad thing. And we're not pro-clot either. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God, we, I'm very angry. Anti-clot. We haven't been pro clot. Oh, I'm very anti clot. Not for years we've been pro clot. That was just a slight <laughs> moment in time where we thought, hang on. It was on a, a phase. Has it any- just a phase. Has anybody <laughs> spoke to the clots? That's what we said. Uh, they, they were <laughs> underrepresented. They were. <laughs> Everyone finds them and cuts them out. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but Tom Gilbert's out for the uh, for the remainder of the season and mm. a lot of next season, I imagine, too. Uh, yeah, I think is... they're saying mid-season next year. It's heartbreaking because yeah. he was really turning into, not the heart and soul of that pack, obviously, but he was, but he was such an integral, yeah. integral role player. But at the same time, around the time he was injured, Half of their squad also was. So. Weeks, they're old. Yeah. They're old. They, 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 they got injuries due to age, you know, mm. hip replacements and such. Uh, uh, and <laughs> injuries due to youth as well. A youth and age. Being yeah, young yeah. and in. <laughs> I don't think any of the players were euthanized. Now. Euthanized. Yeah. And if they were, they've yeah. covered it up very, very well. Why do they call that 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 thing about ending your life with this assisted? It sounds so much like youth in Asia, mm. like like your your childhood. Well, it in was Asia. modelled closely on the Chinese one child policy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard me, uh, Xi Jinping. Well, oh, we're going. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> Got to get in trouble again from the uh, the Communist Party. <laughs> the CCP are after us. <laughs> but it wasn't and that. They know that we're very pro communist. We know usually, that we so are. One slip yeah. up, I think we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Manly yeah. wasn't spared, Liam. It was mm. uh, also Jason Saab as well as uh, Ruben Garrick. Mm. Uh, two of their their outside flyers are yeah, going to be out. Saab for... nine thousand. Yeah, Saab high grade uh, hamstring uh, tear strain. One Which of the is two. funny because the Saab is very much a medium grade sports yeah. car. <laughs> Yeah, what happened to the subs? They still make them. They kept blowing up. They kept blowing up. My dad up. had a sub briefly. That's how I learned to drive oh, a really? manual, oh. and it blew up. Oh. Yeah. So, not great cars. That was before the Bluebird, wasn't it? The, uh... It was after the Bluebird. The oh, Bluebird no. died because you could see the floor through the rust. <laughs> Dad's had a number of cars that have blown up. There was a Ford <laughs> yeah. Telstra he left on the side of the road once. Yeah. It just stopped. What, what happens to them? <laughs> I don't know. It's like... It's... <laughs> It's that story of like the car died, but you're like, what happened to the car? And it's like, I set it free. <laughs> I've returned it from whence it came. It's at a Back farm. Back into nature. It's a farm. It's, it's out the farm now, but really, we, we put it down. We what took- happened to that good old fun Australian pastime of stealing someone's car, taking it to the bush and burning it out? Blowing it up. We yeah. don't seem to do that much anymore no. as a nation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <but it's, laughs> we'll have yeah. the address uh, at the in a link there. I think Australia really started to go downhill when we stopped stealing and blowing up cars for the fun of it. Remember yeah. they did that to Tinkler's car? Did, did they? they? Yeah, they a couple stole of youth car? stole, I believe, his Ferrari. Did they burn it out? Did they take it out to... That's a story I haven't heard. I don't know. We don't have know. To, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was, so Ruben Garrick Manley uh, is also uh, suffering some injuries of two, two of their uh, outside backs. Mm, two uh, important parts of the outside backs. Uh, Garrick was pretty good until then. Uncomfortable watching Josh Adokar with clearly a very, very painful shoulder yeah. play and finish off the, the a half. brave man to finish the half, but seeing him go into contact, I, yeah. felt, I felt for the fella. I yeah. felt for him. Every time. It like it he hurt. Was- he turned the other shoulder. He couldn't go quickly into contact. Um, he was getting beaten yeah. up. Beaten up. He was yeah. getting beaten up. Yeah. Which is a, which is a crime in this country. To beat up a person. <laughs> it is. And yet it's just it was, allowed on the oh, rugby league field. I know. You've got a player that yeah. you should be seeking medical attention, but instead you're <laughs> whacking him to the ground. <laughs> It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> and I won't stand for it. On this day and age. It was like I remember a few years ago in that state of origin where Thurston's shoulder exploded. Yeah. And the Joey bl- was confused. He's like, why don't they run? run at him? Run at him. Run at him. And an old lady called up uh, Talking Sports. She's like, well, they shouldn't run at him because no, that's not fair. No, it's it's got a sore unsportsmanly. Shoulder. It's yeah. like, duh, we want to win. Yeah. We sucked at Origin for so long. We had a chance to kill a man who was good against us, and they didn't. They didn't. Yeah. But no, it was. I think it was nice because we just, condone uh, assault on the footy field uh, here at the Joust. <laughs> Cameron Munster also uh, suffered an injury off the field, but it was a bit of a funny one because he slipped over in the shower, yeah. which yeah. is a very dangerous place to slip over, Liam. Well, you got to read between the lines on this one, Joust. Mm. You know, you'd always have a kid maybe once a year he'd come into school, he's broken his arm what happened oh, i fell in the shower it's a wanky accident it was a wanky yeah. accident yeah. yeah he was he was just having a quick tug in the mind's shower. preoccupied you <laughs> yeah. say yeah yeah he's busy showers are slippery they are slippery. if you introduce very fast motions to it yeah you know it's Co- bound to happen kyle renwick is a big supporter of not ever cleaning a shower because using the shower is cleans cleaning itself because yeah. it's all the soap it, it, yeah. the soap gets everywhere and it cleans the shower you're just mm. introducing more soap yeah, That's exactly. all we're saying. <laughs> You're showering your own shower. Yeah. It's silly. It's, it's silly. a waste of water. It's water, it's yeah. soap. Everything should be clean. But it's I think not. I was a big fan of wanking the shower. But, they, but that too. Uh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> David, <laughs> David, David, we're talking about other funny slips outside of the game, uh, which caused uh, horrific injuries. David Kidwell uh, <laughs> slipped over 
at his, uh, at, uh, I believe it was his toddler's own party. Uh, two-year-old daughter, yeah, he, he, he tripped over and did his ACL, uh, which 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 is a you know a tough thing to do considering he, he was known for you know putting on big hits. He was a powerful hitter. Yeah, yeah, and then, powerful hitter. But it took a child's children's party to really uh, to come to this you know season-ending injury. Mm. And then of course Robbie Kern slipped off a horse mm. in 1999. He was a it was a team building exercise. Uh, yeah, Wayne Pierce was the coach. He thought, let's throw everyone up on horses. horses That'll yeah. really bring him together. Robbie Kearns broke his collarbone. I think it Bradley was. Bradley Clyde got injured as well, which was arguably t- was you know towards the tail end of his career. Yeah. But then there was the other one. I think it was Tom Trebojevic a few years ago. Yeah. Remember, he had that race on the Manly Corso yes, against yes. the man who was faster than him. And then he he also up- conveniently pulled his hamstring in the shower in that the week. Shower, yeah. It was clearly an injury from racing against a man after 40 schooners yeah. down the main street of Manly, which is the most honourable thing you can do. One thing... Feats of athletic impressiveness... Yeah. After a night at the pub, yes, that's more Australian than stealing and burning out a car. It is good feats of strength, climbing, feats of speed, climbing street signs. Yeah, climbing street signs. You, know, you can do anything you like. Going for a dip, you know, seeing who can get the fastest fifty meter butterfly time. I tell you what, in Tom Travoyevich's defence, you do feel like you're running pretty quick when you're pissed. You know, it, <laughs> it just—it feels like you're probably breaking records. You know, you have moments where you feel like you're superhuman. There should so. be a pissed Olympics. Pissed Olympics. You know, there's all that talk yeah. about the enhanced Olympics where they're just—they're like, we just everyone do as much performance-enhancing drugs as you can. Yeah, there should be the pissed Olympics. And maybe just a regular man who's yeah. sober, just to give it reference of the how bit well of a badly conspiracy they're that I've had in my head for a while. Oh, remember yeah. Eric Musambani, um, the Ethiopian uh, swimmer in the 2000 Olympics. Eric the Eel. Yes. Eric the Eel. Yes. He was clearly pissed because he sucked at swimming. He did. He'd yeah. had 40 schooners beforehand yeah. and just was like, oh, yeah, I'm from Ethiopia. He <laughs> just stumbled in. He's like, yeah, I'm from Ethiopia. Like, are you racing for Ethiopia? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. How, big, how long's the pool? 50 metres. Huh? Because he was in a what? heat by himself as yeah, well. Yeah, he, well, he was meant to be uh, three in the heat. The other yeah. two got disqualified. Mm. Um, but that, I think, uh, we can say is uh, arguably the greatest feat uh, an athlete's ever done while pissed. You can f- see it. In him mm. to someone that doesn't swim. If you swim the first fifty too hard, mm. you, if you're exhausted, you just can't keep going very quickly. And he clearly got very, very tired on the lap back. I, I think it was a hundred meters. I used to make that mistake in the cross countries at school. I couldn't. I couldn't like. Yeah. I had no concept of distance. I was yep. like, oh, it's three kilometers. It's like, oh yeah. I'll just sprint out of the blocks. It's because of the blocks take everyone takes off so quickly. Yeah, yeah. You don't have the the, the the sort of you know the fortitude to say no no no. I'm going to go quite yeah. slowly. Here. And growing up in the country, our cross country actually went through the bush went through, through the, the country. country. Yeah, I'm amazed no kids ever you know straight off the track and were bitten by a brown snake. <laughs> like no child disappeared during our cross country events, which I think is pretty impressive. We have lots to talk to Newcastle Knights, but we're going to take a halftime break and be back at talking about the review of the Canberra game and the preview of the Cowboys game. Please join us in one moment. Alrighty then. Welcome back to the second half of the Joust. Now, Liam, very special thing is happening on Saturday at 5.30. It's not just the Knights are taking on the Cowboys for round two, but it, it was also the, the debut of the very own Joust Burger, which we'll be seeing. It's under top secret what it's mm. going to be. It's going to be something incredibly special. Yes, we can tell you that. Special it'll be, but top secret it is. And the way that we can really christen it as a mm. Joust Burger is by you wrapping your big old gums around it. Oh, I intend to. Yeah. And my teeth and my hands and all the bits for eating, jamming yes. it down my esophagus. Yeah, you can't just go down like a duck and eat no. it. No, no, no. Because no. then you'll just be eating the top bun. and then I look the, like an idiot. Yes, yeah, a fool. Yeah, yeah like it's something in some sort of competitive eating competition. Yeah, they dunk it in the water to make it easier to get down the gullet. They do that in the, mm. in the competitive eating, but this is more leisurely. It's sort of like if you were going to be watching a game at 5.30 afternoon, we're still in daylight savings. Mm. So 5.30 is still... I love still daylight savings. The sun's up. And where do you want to be? Out with your friends, watching sport, drinking cold beers in the outside, inside, the inside, outside, outside at the Wickham Park Hotel. You have succeeded in arousing me greatly, <laughs> mm. Maggie. You, just, you have a way with words that just uh, gets me going. Not for the last <laughs> time, eh? <laughs> yeah, uh, my inanimate yeah. carbon rod down here. <laughs> But, Liam, if we're looking at something less exciting, less... Uh, yeah, the review. I know this is your least favourite part, but it is also important to do the review. I'll tell you my least favourite part when the Knights lose the football game. That's true. When the Knights win the football game, it's my favourite time of the week. It is. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I think, Nagy, I attended this game and there you was did. a great big sense of just the entire city of Newcastle just letting out a collective sigh of disappointment. You are one of the 22,378 people. I Uh-oh. thought there would be a larger crowd. I know it's Thursday, Thursday. night, yeah. 8 o'clock, and yeah. it's a tough one, especially for a family, for well, children. People, not only do people have to work the next day, but the game's not going to finish till 10. Yeah, yeah, I had to work the next day and I got rugby league drunk. <laughs> it was the worst shift of my life on Friday. It's terrible. <laughs> But I had to, given the poor performance of the Newcastle Knights. I tried to scrub my brain clean with alcohol. When, obviously at halftime, it was 6-8. Mm. And we, you know, Tyson Frizzell just went over for quite the impressive try. He was a good boy. When did the did you feel that the, they lose the room, Liam? Where did you feel like... They, was- you know what? They really lost the room. Uh, what time did Hudson Young get sin bin? 24 minutes in. They lost the room Yeah. 24 minutes in. Hudson Young gets sin bin. Yes. And I... I looked at Brittany and I almost was going to say, watch the Raiders go and score immediately. And within one minute, Zach Hosking, former mm. Newcastle Knight, of course, yes. crashed over for a try. Now, was- I thought if I said it to Brittany, I would curse the Knights into doing that. But yep. now maybe uh, I should have said it and I would have. Uh, it would have not happened. Perhaps. You should have materialised yeah. the thought into words mm. and then the, 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 the ether yeah. would, would have said, ha no, <laughs> you've said it. They the ethers bit me back. There we Dang go. it. You've got to do something different. Ah, gross. But it was also, if we look at the names there, Zach Hosking, mm. Danny Levi, mm. uh, Hudson Young. What do mm. those names sound familiar, Liam? Mm, boys mm. from the Hunter. The at some point in their career, they, they were, were involved mm. in or around the Hunter Valley. It does. And, it and then you had Pasami Solo, as all we discussed last week, what? how many nights... Uh, juniors, Knights, locals there were, and they really turned it around on us. Tom Starling did a good thing as well. Joseph Tarpany. Joseph Tarpany, he yeah. always does good things. He's a very good football player. I, I'm surprised, really, that Newcastle supporters aren't sort of treating the Raiders as their second side, because mm. basically, there's a lot of Knights-ish players playing for them. I'll tell you another humorous thing. You could really, really tell that the Knights had lost the room when uh, everyone was so bored that they brought back the Mexican wave. Oh, did they? When was the last time you saw the Mexican wave as a sporting event? I think it was the 2003 Rugby, Rugby World Cup. Yeah, during the game. The it game's was on. that and the, boring and like, that some guy on the piss-drinking hill started the wave. It didn't go you know, an eighth of the way around. Yeah. And he just kept trying. And then eventually went halfway around and by halfway, it was like, well... This isn't fun. I don't know why we ever did this. It's not exciting. There's always, it's usually the members at the cricket yeah. at the SCG where it goes right around and then the members will just be like, we're not getting off our cushions. Mm. you know. And then it'll, just, and then it'll go back around to the yeah. people, the plebs up there and the nosebleeds. <laughs> uh, that's the only excitement they get. Yeah. The beer snakes and the mm. uh, and, and the jumping. That's all they have. And the breasts. The breasts. <laughs> they, that's all they have. That's the excitement they give to the plebs in, in the poor man's seats. Not up there with the college shirts. Yeah, and the, the Williams. Yeah, the yeah. Williams, yeah. And all the finance bros all their jobs yeah <laughs> it's like the wolf of wall street the corporate boxes at the cricket at the yeah. scg yes it's all a write-off to them yeah, you it's, a, it's a write-off why can't we write anything off what do they write off i don't know <laughs> they just write it off but it's free apparently <laughs> to watch what have very good seats means it's free i went in uh, actually to dad got some tickets uh from working for the rest Westpac Rescue Helicopter. Oh. We got to go in the fancy restaurant at the, the Knights game once. Well, you have to share this with me. I've never been. They served as a frozen bilo lasagna. Yeah. Now, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Yeah. A frozen bilo lasagna tastes really good, especially with the frozen garlic bread in the next aisle. Yes. But for a corporate-esque setting, yeah. I must say I expected more. Expected better than horse meat. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I was wrong to expect. I was know. it a good ratio of cheese and meat and everything for it? Of course. It's a frozen lasagna from Bilo. It's a perfection. Yeah. It's absolute perfection. Yeah. You know? it's, it's Michelin stars coming out of the ass. <laughs> <laughs> means he's got four spare Michelin tyres. Four, four Michelin tyres and a spare. There is some unfortunate uh, uh, stats coming out of the game. Forty-five percent possession of the disgusting. Tw- Twenty-five minutes with the uh, with the with the game. With disgusting. Sixty-eight percent completion. Disgusting. Right. Yeah, all disgusting. Yeah. Especially when you compare it to the other team who had a lot more of all those things. Which that's again in rugby league. Generally, that's what you want to do. The bigger number yeah. is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had the bigger number in the wrong parts. Now yeah. at, at half time, it was four line breaks to none, and I really thought that the Knights are just waiting. They're just positioning themselves. You know, they're getting bowling a few pineapples, mm. sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll playing put a bit of chess, perhaps. Yeah, we'll yeah. get ourselves in a good position, and we didn't. <laughs> we didn't happen when we got up there. And Tyson Frizzell, I know it was against twelve men after mm. the Hudson Young uh, Simbin, but it looked like oh, we can score tries at will. Mm. That's fine. 
But we just William never, tries. William tries, but yeah. we just never got but up William there. Didn't. Mm. We, we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> William did not, and it was just—it just seemed like we were just constantly trying to build for a position mm. of dominance, but we never quite got there. There were moments, Liam, where I thought there were certain players uh, that that really put in the the hard yards and. and, and Effort areas up the wazoo. Mm. And there was one point where Daniel Safedi just owned um, Pasami Solo. Pasami Solo. Pasami Solo. For, oh, it seemed to be a three or four minute period. Every time he ran the ball, he ran straight at Pasami and ran over him. Every time that Pasami ran the ball, he tackled him and tackled him front on. But then it wasn't backed up by anything. It, it was brief moments of uh, very goodness. Yeah. I would say excellence. It was brief moments of very goodness. Yeah. And then there were uh, less brief moments of very badness. No cohesion, no. And, unless we're talking about badness. And then yeah. there was cohesion. Very was cohesive on the bad side. But again, time. I think that's a linguistic error that Adam O'Brien <laughs> didn't quite get across. <laughs> yeah, like, you need yeah. cohesion on the goodness, guys. Yeah. They're like, oh, you said you had to have it on the badness. It, 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 there, was, there was kicks out in the full. Mm. One by Caelan Pong off a dropout. One another by Phoenix. Sorry, off a, off a kickoff, I should say. Another one for Phoenix when it was in play. And he decided very, very carefully to not kick the ball into the back of the the head of, of a of, of a uh, teammate. I don't so, see why. So Kicking sh- a teammate in the back of the head with a football is funny. <laughs> so it would have been really funny. It really is. It would have been funny. But <laughs> then he shuffled across two metres and then kicked the ball and it landed out by two metres. The original... The, ge- Calib- the original calibration was correct. The geography was right. <laughs> yeah. It just was the execution. I once was playing in a rugby union game. Yes. And uh, I was standing at the side of the scrum so that my 5'8 at the back could receive the ball and punt it in and touch. But my halfback decided he wanted to pick it up and kick the ball in to touch himself. Yeah. He kicked it immediately into my stomach from about a metre away. Yeah. <laughs> we both looked like uh, idiots. idiots. Yeah. We both looked like absolute idiots. Monumental mm. morons, fools, yeah. But I just, I had nothing to do with it. No, I stood where I was supposed to. Victim. I did what I was meant to. You did. Then I had a bloody <laughs> Gilbert booted <laughs> into my <laughs> belly. Yeah, it's a belly-sized ball kicked yeah. into the belly. Yeah. The Thanks, belly Chris. Did, the belly didn't know what to do. Thanks, it was Chris Johns. <laughs> it was introduced. Great by, fella. Very yeah, good. Chris fella. Johns, good fella. Yeah. Uh, but it was also uh, a bit of an experiment out there. With uh, we had too many cooks in the kitchen, mm. or too many chiefs, and not enough Indians. Could we say that anymore? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Too many chefs in the kitchen yeah. also uh, works. Chiefs, chefs, one letter. <laughs> well, I think chef originally came from the, the French translation of chief. chief. Yeah. yeah. Chief cook. Yeah. Mm. Chief chef. The, <laughs> and if we look on the screen now, we see uh, all the, the, the chefs when they were on the field at the one time. We had Cogger, we had Hastings, Gamble, and Crossland, who went from a uh, hooking role mm. to a lock a Running role. lock forward type yeah. role. Now, we didn't, this isn't the type of headwear we usually discuss, but, you know, <laughs> if, the, if you're a chef, you have to have your beautiful white pleated, uh, you know, souffle hat on. You do, yeah. And uh, yeah. if you haven't seen the the, uh, the visual there, Joust, it's just those four in chef chef's hats. hats yeah. Really? But it didn't work. <laughs> Having all four of them on the field, it just watching it live, it was just perplexing. I know we're waiting for a time where Braley's going to be coming back mm. into this side, and it would be. I think we got a little glimpse of Adam O'Brien's plan. It's just that we'll keep Phoenix on for you know another fifteen minute period as a running lock. But I don't think it, after he's done so much work, take him off. I Get don't f- think that glimpse should become more than a glimpse. A glimpse. I think keep it, was, it a glimpse. Don't yeah. make it a good long stern look. Mm. Keep it a glimpse. Yeah. Keep yeah. it just a flicker. Just yeah. a just a quick as the camera goes just just and a then flicker the- in the postman's <laughs> eye. <laughs> 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 Look, we're talking chef's headwear. I think there's some uh, some headwear we should probably discuss. Yeah, so the the, uh, the the hats off for this week, which is something a little bit more positive. Mine is mm. guy played like a much younger man for someone that was early on. They said that this is going to be his final season. We don't know if we're going to sign him again, but he came out there. He was beating tackles. He ran for over 200 metres. He had to play wing at one stage, which probably didn't work out so well for us in, in terms of his defence. But it was every a time throwback he got the, guy performance. Every it was time classic he, guy. He did. He mm. looked great. It was it, troubling the defence. Hats off to Gagai. Mm. Uh, who was your hats off to? Hats off to... Tyson Frizzell, Tyson please Frizzell. and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Again, wound back the clock. I think he showed uh, leadership. Yep. He said, boys, I'm going. You're coming with me. Yep. Unfortunately, they didn't. Yes. But he tried his best. He got moved out in the centres as well. He did, yeah. Uh, obviously, with the reshuffling because of various injuries. Mm. But uh, he scored that try, of course. But I, I thought Tyson Frizzell actually had a fairly handy game and the kind of game where... No nonsense. Maybe. No nonsense. Yeah. It was sans nonsense. Yeah, there was did. too much nonsense out there and he wasn't having none of it. Yes. Yeah. It's the kind of... Again, another player that's getting older and you mm. start to think, should we re-sign him? I'm happy with his performance. I as think- am I. 
I think now that we've got some movement in the team where there's new players coming in, we need somebody to rock at, yes. the, at the middle. And he's built like a series of boulders, as we've discussed we in has, the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a, a boulder boulders. from Indiana Jones, but six of them. <laughs> now that we've uh, lost Dylan Lucas uh, as one of the injuries. Uh, Which the is other a one. real shame. The boy has promised. The boy played well. Yeah. The boy has hurt himself. Hurt himself. He's done a whoopsie. HIA. He, he shouldn't be... have had that shower at half time. Yeah, that's right. He, he slipped. slipped and fell on his ass. <laughs> but that welcomes KPP, Kyle Kyle, P- Kyle Kai Pierce, Kai Paul. Pierce. I called him Kyle. <laughs> Kai Pierce, Paul, uh, into the side. He's, he's been promoted up from the bench after playing forty pretty impressive minutes. I liked what I saw from yeah. KPP. Yeah, he's promising. He's exciting. There was excitement. He's juicy. He's so lengthy. Like you see he it is. when he's on the field, especially his length is really uh, amplified mm, super uh, by, length. by his yeah by his, by his uh, own stature. Length. Yeah, so especially <laughs> when he's standing next to less lengthy boys. Yeah, yeah. But of course, when the hats come off, Nagy, the hats have to go back back on, on to a play. And I do. wish that we. Had had about 15 hats that we could put back on our heads at the same time. Mine is to Daniel Saifidi. Despite having those moments where he looked, you know, really good. Hats the glimpses. Back, hats back on. Uh, the the uh, where the glimpses where he looked like he was owning Pasami Solo, mm. rightly so. There was some Chief-esque um, moments. I wanted to see a, like a, a, a classic Daniel Saifidi mm. um, uh, performance, but even though we had those glimpses, it then also, you know, missing the tackle for Danny Levi under the post. Mm. That hurt. That it was like, oh, you, you know, you should have been quicker. You should have been, you, you know, as under the post, that should be sacred. It should mm. be a sacred defensive area. It should be and he's so much with the bigger eye. than Danny Levi. He should he not have just presented himself as a wall? Yeah. Kind of spread his arms out a bit and just said no. Crushed his skull <laughs> with his bare hand. And feasted on yeah. the goo inside. He should have. <laughs> Why wasn't that the play, Daniel? I'm just saying, when you have a player that's genetically the same as another player, and you're seeing Jacob Safedi playing quite well, mm. I thought he had a really, really solid game. Uh, and then I think, I just want Daniel to be the same. Well, couldn't you put Jacob Safedi in mm. both roles? Okay. So yeah. he subs himself out onto the bench. Yeah. Daniel doesn't actually go on. Just calls himself. They go over to the bench, they kind of spin around in circles like in three-card Monty. And no one knows who's no who. No one knows who's yeah. who. Yeah. Hey, who? Hey, who? Hey, who? Hey, who? Hey, who? Oh, oh. And then you end up with Jacob Safidi playing 80. That's why I'll be for it. You know? <laughs> I thought that's the reason they signed twins. They call that the Safidi trap. That's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> and my hat's back on, and I hate to say this, after the season he had last year, Phoenix, buddy, had a bit of a shocker. Well, he had Made well, four million tackles, but I think he missed seven. He, he had that kick out on the full. Yep. Uh, he uh, didn't seem to do much of that running lock, but you have a thought on why he missed so many tackles now. Well, I just think he's too buggered. I think he's... If you Rightly got, so. Well, he if played you got, a lot if of football. If you've got a good running forward that can play hooker, mm. I like that starting at hooker. Adam movement. Elliott did that a bit at Canberra. He did that a little bit at Canberra, and also Dean Young famously did it with the Dean Young-Michael Ennis swap. Uh, and then where, Greg Inglis murdered him. Yes, he did. He did murder him. But on if, the football field. If you're Again, more assaults of a, on the football field are just accepted. If you're more of a running forward that you can play hooker, yeah, yeah, start 15 minutes of hooker mm. and then and then change it up. But Phoenix is a better hooker. Hooker than <laughs> Phoenix Crossfield Bomblin is a better hooker than anything else. And to put him at lock, he's just not a very good running forward. Mm. So I just think if you're going to have him on, have him on as a hooker. If you want to take him off, get him off. If but, you- but I think the good thing, and as we uh, have seen, you know, we've got this, uh, this four playmaker conundrum. It's yeah. conundrum. Yeah. And I think it's better that we get the conundrum solved early in the season. So while it didn't work and I hated it and it was gross, yeah, I right. think running the four playmakers for maybe the first two, three rounds, see how it goes. Yeah, and if not, I don't know if you guys know this, but there was a great player named Darren Lockie. It was a wonderful mm. fullback. But uh, later Fair in his man. career, he transitioned into 5 eighth. We happen to have a really, really good fullback. Yes. Yeah, do we transition him into a 5'8"? Never been tried. Never been tried before. The reverse Lockyer. Or no, it's the regular Lockyer. The regular Lockyer. Yeah, but yeah. you know, to take a, an exciting fullback with lots of skills, yeah. move him into 5'8". I think it might work, Nagy. Yeah, it could possibly yeah. Yeah, the reverse KP6. Lockyer. KP6. KP6 will go. No, it's the, the, the proper the, the Lockyer. Lockyer. Yeah, yeah. The right the way. reverse Lockyer is moving them back to fullback. Yeah, which is a uh, coward's move. Now, Liam, the, the challenges only get more... Hard, challenging. <laughs> yeah, 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 you had it right there. Did, it was lined it was up. <laughs> Harder challenges. That uh, really was a sentence of uh, two, a, a tale of two sentences. It was. <laughs> uh, this week against the Cowboys at the beginning of the season, we might have thought the Cowboys didn't make the finals mm. last year. Maybe that's not going to be such a bad game. But there's four performance. Well, I think the so Cowboys they, last year, and you're seeing it uh, with the Roosters as well, they yeah. didn't make the finals because the players, uh, certain players had a, a, a bad, season. bad season. When those certain players have a good season, they happen to be the very, very good players. Yes. So while they had a bad season, yes, it's noticeable, but when yeah, they have a good season, oh, 
boy, they're going to be good. Scotty mm. drinks. Yes. You know, Scotty drinks too much, perhaps. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeremiah Nanai. Nanai. He had a really good game. Highland Lukey. Lukey. Valentine Holmes. All the Danger Let's, Boys. Uh, there's 17 of them. Should we name them all? No, I think those four are the Danger Boys. Yeah. And the... Kyle Felt, because he just does odd things. You like Jordan Rapana like that? Kyle Felt does things on a football field that you look at it and you just go, what was that? Wasn't rugby league. Yeah. What he did was some sort of alien uh, thing from a different sport. They have quite a side, you know, when mm. they're playing well, to the best of their ability, they look, you know, quite challenging. Very See, challenging. I, I brought that yeah. back. It was yeah. a callback. <laughs> Very comedically strong. Oh, I was about to say hard. Yeah. Uh, but if you, you know, they've got talent right through. And the, even a player like Tom Alolo, uh, last week barely played at all. 20 minutes or something he Is played against the Dolphins. Yeah. So, but then they've got the... Getting co- paid a million dollars a season to do so. so. And they've got the players like Cotto, Nanai and Lukey, as you mentioned. You Cotto's know, another one to worry about. They are just... The know, brave boy. I'm just hoping that the Knights can see that now. And just to say, like, hey, this is, you know, we, we're going up to North Queensland, mm. which we do not play well up there. I think we've got a stat on the screen to say uh, the last time we won up there in Townsville, Frownsville, I call it. <laughs> hey? <laughs> Hey, uh, Fr- <laughs> was the last time we won up oh, there? I was going to go with Clownsville. You Clownsville, beat me to it. God damn it! Uh, yeah. No, Frownsville's better. 2015 <laughs> was the last time we won up there. 16, 14, still a tight match, and that was when we were shit. Uh, <laughs> so I think it was 2015. That was I think in our first. Uh, f- that was the first four game win streak of 2015. Oh, we won the first four games, and then we said. Pack your bags, boys. I mean, pack up your bags. Unpack your bags. We're not doing anything more. We're only winning another four. Leave your bags yeah. alone. Doesn't matter what you do with your bags. Season's <laughs> over, boys. Yeah. Season's, season's over. Season's done. We've done enough. Yeah. And then they only won another four games throughout the rest of well, the season. Well, that's because they didn't know whether they were going to be packing their bags or unpacking, unpacking them. Unpacking them, they don't know. <laughs> the, the important thing about rugby league is consistency. Yes. You want to know each week, I'm going to pack my bag before the game, I'm going to unpack it when I get home after the game. Yeah. They didn't know. Not carrying bags. How can you expect <laughs> to play good rugby league when you don't know if you're packing or unpacking? Yes, yeah, sometimes I can sympathise with that feeling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the la- 2015, a long time ago, mm. coming up to 10 years. Some would say... T- yeah. Yeah, oh man. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, so it's going to be very, very difficult to win up there. Mm. Proven. Proven so. Well, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. This time of year, it's very warm. Humid. Humid. Crocodiles in the ocean. Box jellyfish, irukandji everywhere. Basically everything can kill you. Why would you live there? I don't know. I what, don't know. What, what fresh... It's also barely Queensland. People go to Queensland all the time. They're like, oh, they on the Gold Coast. So I'm in the Queensland, barely over the border. North Queensland is equally as far away yeah. from the Gold Coast as Newcastle is from the Gold Coast. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think the Brisbane line defensive plan of World War II was the smartest thing the government could have done. Yeah. They said, if the Japanese invade Australia, we're just going to pull back. They can have Queensland. Yes. Because <laughs> good luck good luck marching yeah. your way through Queensland. I think well, we should have just given it Away, and as we, I have- would rather we don't have Queensland as part of the Commonwealth of Australia at all. As we've said before, also Liam, Townsville, the name <laughs> is town, which means town, and Ville, which, which means, means town. town, town's town. <laughs> uh, so. Speaks volumes, doesn't it? It does speak so, volumes. Yeah. So now we've got a good, honest city like mm. Newcastle coming up against... With a real name. A real name. It's a, a city with a proper name. <laughs> coming up against a ragtag team of wankers up there. Uh, now, now, something's just occurred to me, Please, Nagy. please share. There's no castle in Newcastle. No. <laughs> Are we a city of frauds as well? Possibly. But At least we're not a city of cowards. But that's why I always thought with the, the, the knights, because the knights... Well, there's a there's a there's there's castle the, on the flag of the Newcastle. Castle. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's an ugly flag. It's green and brown. That's the two worst colours you could put on the flag of a city. That's Newcastle's flag. Yeah, green. it's green on top, poo yeah. brown on the bottom with a picture of a castle in the middle. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's really... There's no it's subtext. Gross. There's no subtext there. No. <laughs> yeah. I remember green. the Newcastle... I, uh, wildfires. They used to wear the Newcastle Awful. City colours, yeah. which were green and brown. It looked terrible. Yeah, they look, well, yeah. The brown almost looked like skin colour. It did. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't very flattering. Mm. Uh, cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon colour. Uh, so we got. Yeah, obviously the danger men to go through with the Cowboys. We have to, to contain the Lukies, the the Nanais, uh, the drink, Cotters, the drink, drink waters, the drink waters, the Cotters, all the team. Basically, we have to be playing the best game ever if we want to be winning this game. Uh, and also, we have to be, manage to adapt. They've been targeting our very own the bus, Greg Marju. You don't target Greg the bus. That's rude. No, they've been. Consider it. They've been kicking to him yeah. on the kick, aiming for him. So he catches, he gets tackled, and then he's he out of the can't point. compete in the first set. Yeah, yeah. You but now to... we've got another powerful man on the other side in Tom Jenkins who yes. can kind of fill that role. Or I suggested something very smart. I know you're about to credit me with this great idea. Mm-hmm. On the last tackle, switch out gags and uh, 
No, switch out Bradman yeah. and yeah. Uh, Greg the Bus. Put so Bradman, Bradman back there. He yeah. can catch, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, he's been playing rugby league for a while. He a knows while. roughly the size and shape of a Steedon. Yes. Just hold your arms yes. in the right size and shape of a Steedon. Steedon. Although, with his enormous chest, yes. he might bounce off. Yes. But he's I all think, muscle. I think, just... that's a, I think it would be adapting to what's clearly mm. happening is that they're targeting Greg because they don't want him to run as the first run, get the ascendancy. Mm. Uh, so they're, 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 they're making that. I don't know what's going to happen, Liam. I'm all mm. confused. We've got a new lineup there. Tom Jenkins, as you said, is going to make his debut. Uh, Very excited. Another lengthy man. But yeah. a, a, a well-built lengthy man. He's powerful. We've got a, a kind of a, a target to kick to on the wing, which we yeah. know Jackson Hastings has been longing for for yeah. a while. Now, Tom Jenkins is a good finisher. I'm hoping that he can he can really get over the try line. He, he scored 40 plus tries in 60 games for reserve grade. He's been, no mean feat. He's been playing as men for years. He's mm. ready for this. He's ready for it. And I think that, I think Jackson Hastings is also quite keen and possibly uh, uh, Cogger uh, is is keen to be chipping to the mm. wing, giving a target because we all know we all talk about Dom Young, but the bloke couldn't catch. And I mean, we've got a hooker whose nickname mm. is literally Phoenix yeah. Crossfield Bomlin. Yeah, come yeah. on. Yes, just yeah. get Phoenix putting the boot into the Steeden, mm. to Tom Jenkins. And you you won't miss. Yeah, you and, won't miss. And of course, we have got a uh, another debutant, a uh, former Panther, former Rabbit, and Cartwright. Cartwright. Cartwright is playing. It Cartwright was, Ford. It's going to be exciting coming in at seventeen. He said Cartwright. He said Cartwright. Yeah. I'm not Cartwright. No, no, you're not Cartwright. He's Cartwright. He's Cartwright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, also in the extended bench. I hope he's not Cart wrong. No. Well, also, we've got Thomas Cart. I Boy, I hope he can. can. <laughs> uh, the Red Mist, all, all the other uh, mm. notable faces there. And hopefully we, we can work out the Cogger Phoenix conundrum mm. and how, work that out because obviously Jaden Braley is breaking Look, down the both Jack the Nets. Cogger school for unremarkable boys. Yeah. I think they really need to rework the curriculum this year. So that's think what so happens too. when you're a school. People go there, they infiltrate, they find your curriculum. Yeah. We'll sort yeah. out your syllabus. They exploit it. Exploit oh, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be watching the game anyway, you'll be watching at the Wickham Park Hotel. Wrapping your laughing gear around an amazing Joust Burger. Mm, mm. Joust Burger, cold beers, good times, good friends. That's where you'll be watching it, won't you, Liam? Yes, bud. I'll be in Sydney, uh, which is even further away. From and just a bad place. Oh, I know, but I've got pride commitments. If you like us, please like I just us. I in general, Sydney sucks. Oh, yeah, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> you got Apple Tunes, Instagram. Ooh, TikTok you, now. YouTube, yeah. Facebook, all those social pipes. Spotify as well. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us once again. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you again next week when we take on the Melbourne Storm. So we need all the support we can get. Mm. Uh, but hopefully, we can get over the Cowboys and get the first win of the season. Thank you very much, Jousters. We'll catch you again next week.